What's up YouTube and welcome back to a new video. Today we're gonna learn how to use a clay material to create a abstract scene. I will give away three free HDRIs that you can use in your project. They're very simple, but it's a really good baseline for lighting your scene. Let's get into it. The first thing we're gonna do is download this clay shader from that creator on Blender Swap. There's definitely a more premium and more advanced clay material that you will find uh, around the internet. But for the spirit of the channel, I wanted everything to be free and easily accessible. You just need to create an account and you can download it. To create this really cool clay shader, there's basically two principles. The first one is going to be the material. It is using a fingertip texture that is used as roughness and bump. The other trick is use a displace modifier that will slightly displace the geometry. We're just going to improve this one a little bit for our purposes by adding a subdivision surface modifier. Once this is done, just copy the cube to your project file. You can put that on the side and we'll get back to it. I'm going to delete this plane. So we start from scratch, add a mesh, plane, size 6, tab for edit mode, 2 for a line mode, select this line, E to extrude, Z, 6, and I want to make that even higher, so I'm going to GZ4. I'm going to select the line in the middle, Control B for bubble. Mice wheel up to increase the number of segments, something like that. Shade smooth, front view, tab again. I'm going to enable the X-ray. I'm going to select those vertices, move, Control, 1, 2, Control, Shift, 1, 2, okay. I'm going to place my camera. I have a little preview here that I can use. Next step, we're going to take care of the lighting immediately. I'm going to open a window, shader editor, world. I will provide you four very simple HDRIs. They are free for you to use. They're very high res and you can use them to start lighting your scene the way you want. Shift A, S, environment texture. Select one of the HDRIs, plug color to color, control T. And now we have one of those HDRI that is already applied. With the mapping node, you can play with the rotation on the Z-axis, so things will move around. These HDRIs do not replace lights per se, but it's a really good baseline and starting point for your scene. I want to make sure I have enough space and I'm going to change the resolution as well. So this will help me generate the thumbnail for this video. I'm going to move this shape out of the way and we're going to start creating our own shapes. I do not need the shader editor for now, so I'm going to minimize this here. Make sure you have your extra curves and extra mesh enabled in the add-on section. Shift A, curve, curve profile, Helix 3D. If you've been following this channel, you know I love this shape. I'm going to use the curve option to create some geometry. Object data properties, geometry, bevel, 0.2 sounds good. I'm not going to fill the caps because I will do that afterward. If I want to tweak that later on, I'm going to make a copy, control V. And I'm going to move that into a collection, backup. And I'm going to hide that collection. Right click on the helix, convert to mesh, tab for edit mode, two for lines. Alt click here as well as Shift Alt click on this one. F to fill, B to bevel, and now we have some nice rounded edges. Something we're gonna do a lot is copy data from the original shape. So first click on the target shape, then Shift and click on the original shape. In a modifiers tab, we will copy the modifiers onto the new shape. Click on the carrot, copy to selected. Click on the carrot, copy to select it. And now our shape has inherited those two modifiers. As for the material, we're going to select the material. Let's rename this one clay green. And we can make a copy and we can rename this one clay beige and select a beige ish color. This material is using UV to project the texture. So we need to UV and wrap, but Blender makes that very easy for us. Select the shape, tab, A to select all, U, and cube projection. 
and now the texture is applied correctly to our object. We'll work on the composition a little bit later. And if you've been following this channel, you know I like to use a color palette as reference. I'm gonna tweak the light a little bit because it's a little bit too blown up right now. If you want to use the same settings, I'm using the simple one and I rotated the Z axis 70 degrees. Let's add more shapes and I will show you how you can tweak some of those details later on. Shift A, mesh, round cube, presets, rounded cube, radius 0.85, right click, shade smooth, and I'm gonna shade smooth the previous shape too. Same process, select the target object, and then shift and click on the source object, parrot, copy to selected, parrot, copy to selected, material, clay beige, and let's make a copy out of it by clicking this button, new material, and we're gonna call that clay orange. Open the color picker. Nothing is applied because it's the same principle. So we're gonna use tab A, U, Q projection. Something we can actually play with is the displacement strength. Right now it's quite low, but the more you're gonna increase it, the more distorted your shape is gonna look like. Since the base mesh is pretty low poly, we'll have some weird angles, but nothing you can't fix with a sub D modifier. Just increase the subdivision and you can go pretty extreme, obviously, but it will look quite unrealistic. Something you can play with too is the scale. So if you go into texture properties and if you increase or decrease the size, we'll have more or less finer details. While noises add a little bit of randomness, there's nothing like sculpting yourself by hand some finer details. To do that, it's quite simple. You go to the sculpting tab here and you can go to town with all of those tools. So click to inflate and control click to deflate. Explore the tools available to you through Blender. It's always fun. Remember the base shape is pretty low poly, so feel free to increase the subdivision if you want to have finer details. But for this purpose and for what I want to do, this is just fine. If you follow that tutorial, you will be familiar with metables, so I'm not going to cover the entire subject, but this is another way to create some organic shapes. Shift A, metable, all. Control D. And I'm gonna start scaling things around and moving things around. The white is not ideal to model, so just set a material and duplicate this material and call that clay green. Looking amazing. I'm gonna go to Metable, Resolution Viewport 0.05, right click, Convert to Mesh, Tab, A, U, Cube Projection. I'm gonna select this shape, then the previous one, Modifier, Displace, Copy to Selected, Subdivision, Copy to Selected. Okay, so that was actually a big mistake, so my computer is gonna take a minute to uh, process that immediately control Z so I don't have the subdivision surface in my metaball modifier. I don't know about you, but I'm quite angry. So let's make a Cheetos. Shift A, mesh, cylinder, radius 0.5. Move that on the side with G. Tap to go into edit mode. Control R, mouse wheel up to increase the cuts. 16, sure, sounds great. Tab to exit edit mode. Let's go back to tab for edit. Select the top lines and the bottom ones. Control B, bevel, just ever so slightly. Modifier, simple deform. Let's do 180. I'm gonna transfer my modifier. Click on the target, click on the source. Copy to selected. I'm going to do the same thing for the material again. Choose clay green, duplicate, and I'm going to name it clay brown. Select the color from our palette, rotate Z, modifier, subdivision surface. Maybe bend that a little more. Let's edit the UVs. Tab A, U, Q projection. Let's play with the strength. That 
that's actually fun. Let's uh, leave it at 0.6. This technique works with primitives, but it also works with models. So we're gonna download two models. I will leave both links in the description. The first one is a foot model from Patrick Art 90 so you can download the 3D model. And the other one is a free low poly ends model by GR Blend. Before importing, let's clean the scene a little bit. So the back plate is gonna be studio. And I'm gonna select all of my primitives using shift and click, new collection. And I can name that object, for example. Click import. And we're gonna start with the fit, which is huge. On the scale, you can directly input maybe 0.15. I'm gonna start with that. If I go into edit mode, you will see this is a pretty high poly model and it's gonna look a little bit too realistic. Since the clay is usually a little bit rough around the edges, we're gonna decimate that model and that's gonna work in our favor. Add modifier, decimate, and we're gonna go pretty extreme with maybe 0.1. Let's go into the wireframe mode so we can see what's happening. And that's still too dense. So 0 0.01, 0 0.005. So that will work for what we want to do. I'm going to apply, click on my target, click on my source, and I'm going to copy to selected and copy to selected. S to resize, move up. I'm going to move this object out of the way and we'll try to bring it back and work on the composition a little bit. I'm going to move around to make sure this is somewhat sitting here. And you can switch from local to global. Fine for now. Let's put some texture. Pick a color. Or you can straight up use another color palette image. This is pretty low poly, so we're gonna tweak the subdivision surface modifier. And I think we can crank that up quite high. Maybe three is actually pretty good. The texture is not applied because we need to unwrap. So edit mode with tab, A, U, Q projection, tab, done. And now you have a clay foot. Let's work the other way around where your model is quite low poly and make it look like clay. So file, import. You have all of those ends. We don't need all of them. Wire mode. I kind of want one that is low poly enough this one seems pretty good so i'm gonna delete the other ones i'm gonna right click set origin to geometry i'm gonna scale that up a little bit maybe s2 is fine for now click on the source shift right click on the target copy to selected copy to selected let's do something fun i want that end to bend and for that we're gonna use a hack so we don't have to use uh, the rigging way Click on the model, set location to zero. Shift A, empty, arrows. I'm gonna click on the hand, then on the empty with shift. In the viewport, I'm gonna hit Control P, set parent to object, keep transform. So I parented my hand with this empty, and that's gonna be helpful when using simple deform. I'm gonna bring the simple deform to the top, and in the origin, I'm gonna use this empty. I'm gonna select bend method. And so if I go on the side, you can see that if I increase or decrease, my hand will be bending. I'm going to close that hole, tab, alt and select F. On the material, I'm going to remove none. I'm going to select green, duplicate, calling that yellow. Edit the UVs, tab A, U, Q projection, tab. Let's make it like the hand is holding the ball or something. Let's tweak the color background, add a material, color. I like this one. This is now your turn to create and add different shapes, different primitives, different colors. I'm gonna speed up the video and I'm gonna go through that process myself and I will come back to break down some of the differences and the things I tweaked along the way.
I just duplicated this model. I tried a nose, uh, but it was not very identifiable as a nose. Didn't like it too much. I will also leave the hair model link in the description. I wanted to uh, create a story. The feet is a little bit entangled. The person is also trying to catch something, but the shape is quite weird. So not something you can do when he has his hair blocked. The theme can be around handicaps and trying to like illustrate that. One last thing that you can play with is how the texture is applied to the model. So if you want the fingerprint to be smaller or bigger, so bring up the UV editor, A to select everything. The bigger I scale my UVs, the smaller the texture is going to be. But on the other hand, the smaller I scale, the bigger details will be. So I can see now the fingerprints are a little bit more identifiable. Thank you so much for following along again. Feel free to subscribe, leave a like and drop a comment down below. It is always appreciated and very helpful for the growth of the channel. And I will see you in the next one.